Hello and welcome to the Mike Guinari podcast. This is episode number 11. So yesterday we spoke about the order of bards, ovates, and druids, otherwise known as Obad, as a uh, druidry organization um, that I'm a part of, a modern one that exists today, um, was formed in the uh, 20th century. So let's talk about another modern druidry organization. Today I want to discuss an organization who go, whose um, acronym is ADF, and it stands for Ernrochtain, um, in Irish that means our own druidry. Um, I guess it could mean that. Um, I translate it personally to our own magic, but no, who knows? So once again, I'm not going to be saying <clears throat> Ernrochtain throughout this whole podcast, so I'm just going to be saying ADF and you know what it means. So ADF, in contrast to Obad, um, is a bit more restrictive and is religious. ADF um, is solely for pagans, and their religious te teachings you know, reflect that and show that. You know, in reality, anyone can sign up for the um, academics only and just not get involved in the religious side of um, if preferred, kind of what I'm doing. Um, I just don't won't go down the clergy path. I'll just stick to the academics. Um, yes, I am a member of ADF. Um, I thought the curriculum was really interesting and well structured. Um, no time limit once again, and for thirty nine dollars, no, twenty nine dollars a year. I'm sorry, twenty nine. It's like what the heck? You might as well uh, become a member. Uh, the ADF is also more of a reconstructionist group. They're trying to make everything as exact to the ancient Druids as possible, as they can based upon known information, as they interpret themselves from whatever source. Um, kind of have to be careful with that, but, you know, everyone's mileage varies. Um <clears throat> Have you noticed I've been saying um a lot? I don't usually do that. It must be nerves from from uh, being on the podcast and uh, putting myself out there. So please ignore the ums. ADF does things in the um, spirit of ancient Druidry, Druidry like I said. Um, and that's important because that's where they get their values and, and, and their compass from. Um, I really like the academics of ADF, as I mentioned before. After you pass their, um, finish their base program called the Dedicants Path, um, then there's different tracks you could take, different what they call guilds you can join and learn their educational um, information. Um, it's pretty pretty elaborate. Um, there's even there's a whole list of requirements um, that you have to go through to uh, to meet the to meet the um, requirements of a Dedicants Path. It's tons of essays and writings and book reviews. And I mean, it should take you a good solid year if you're really, you know, working on it regularly. But it looks so, so, you know, encompassing, so whole that, uh, you know, I haven't even started it yet. I, I'm looking forward to it. There's just so much information out there to, uh, to learn about and go through and vet and test. Um, not enough hours in the day. One of the members actually even wrote um, a book called The uh, Wheel of the Year, which actually guides you through the whole Dedicant Path curriculum um, on a weekly basis. Okay, this week you should do this, this, and this, and this is your homework and so on for each week. That way you kind of had a, have a guide map, a roadmap. Because this to be presented with this, okay, this is your list of uh, of things you have to know and you have to manifest them and writing this, book review that and whatever else. You just have this laundry list and it's like, whoa, you don't know where to start, um, how long it's going to take or anything else. But, you know, with this book, Will of the Year, you have a, a nice guide to follow step by step, which is a really nice thing.
And as I mentioned, once you complete the dedicant path, which once everything's turned in and reviewed, you'll be either approved or um, not approved. If you're not approved, they'll tell you what's lacking and you can go back and fix it however many times as you need to um, until your dedicant path is approved. Uh, but once that, that's done, there's different pathways you can go down. One of them is called the initiate program, um, which is pretty much like a more heavily academic, non-religious track. There's a generalist um, path, um, which I guess just a more relaxing path, not as uh, academically demanding. And there's also the clergy path. Um, if you want to actually become a clergyman, become a, a, a priest or a priestess um, in, in, in their church, in their pagan religion. Um, it's totally optional. I don't intend to do it. And then what I really like, after the dedicant path, you can join a guild study program. Guild study uh, programs, it's not just like a hangout social thing. There actually is curriculum embedded into it, um, and I find it fascinating. Some some of the um, guilds you can um, join, the artisans, bardic, brewers, liturgists, magicians, naturalists, seers, warriors, scholars, and all all this is for thirty dollars a year. Crazy. Um, like I said, there's clear, clear differences between ADF and OBOD. OBOD, ADF definitely takes things uh, extremely ser seriously and pours on the academic rigor. It's probably not for everybody, and it is um, religious. It is pagan. I'm not quite sure where their pagan religion that they practice comes from. I kind of feel it's like an amalgamation of uh, different pagan religions, and then they went and they wrote their their uh, rituals and and everything else and the liturgy based upon what they came up with. But, you know, check it out. You know, it's another mystery school um, where they try to pull back some of those ancient practices and, and ways of life and, you know, at least at the very least, put what they feel as a spirit of the ancient Druids, the ancient pagans into practice. Um, so until tomorrow, have a great one.